Lesson 14, we're going to do some more work with equations of lines and doing the graphs. So far, we've been doing ones where we have an equation and it already is in our favorite form, or we can change it for the y by itself. And we have y equals mx plus b. Or they have given us the graph. And then we look at the graph and figure out what the equation needs to be. What we are going to do today will be a little bit different. What if they don't give us the equation or the graph? What if they tell us some things about it? What if they tell us two points that it goes through? What if they tell us a point and they tell us the slope? Then how can we get the equation and draw the graph? So, M is what in this equation, everybody? It's the slope. And we know that if it is positive, it goes uphill. And if it's negative, it goes downhill. Or if it goes uphill, it has to be positive. And if it goes downhill, it has to be negative. And we know it's the vertical change or the rise over the run. Everybody, what is the B? It's the y-intercept, which means the line goes through 0 comma b. So on your formula pages, and you may want to take several lines to write this. You don't have to do a new formula number every single row. You can do two rows or six rows, whatever you need for one formula. So we are going to write down in a number the slope is. If we have two points that are on the line, so x1, y1, and x2, y2. If we know all four of those numbers, if those are just coordinates, then what we do is we subtract the y's in the numerator. It's not we subtract the coordinates in one parenthesis in the numerator. We take one y minus the other y. And then in the denominator, it's how far apart are they horizontally. We take one x minus the other x. What is important is if I start with the y2, meaning the y of this second point, then I must start with that same point of the denominator. So if I start bottom y minus top y, there needs to be bottom x minus top x, or however I've written those down. We have this funny notation over here, triangle y. That triangle is really the Greek letter delta, and it means the change in. So that means the change in y over the change in x. How much do the y's change? The y's are how, how fine we are. How much does the height change? over how much the, the x has changed, how far apart are they horizontally. So, for example, if this is delta y over delta x, that means delta x is just subtract the x coordinates. And delta y is just subtract the y coordinates. You're not going to really have to do anything with this delta x and delta y this year, but when you get into pre-calculus and calculus, you'll start using delta x for a number of things. And this way you just get to start seeing a notation and understand what it means just a little bit. There are two special cases that I want us to talk about. What if we do y2 minus y1 and get some number, but then we do x2 minus x1 and we get a 0. Can we divide by 0? Can we have zeros in denominators ever? No, that's undefined, so the slope is undefined. And do you remember, was it horizontal or vertical? Everybody show me. Which one has an undefined slope? And most of you are correctly saying that means we have a vertical line when the slope is undefined. On the other hand, if I subtract the x's and get a number of a denominator, but in the numerator, I have a zero. That would make sense. Let's suppose um, we win some contest and we get a pizza party in here. And they bring in an anchovy pizza. 
and it's sliced and certainly has some other pieces also. But this anchovy one is cut at eight pieces. Hold up with one or two hands. How many of those anchovy slices would you like to have? So you roll up to eight. Just see that hand. How many would you like to eat? I want zero. I don't like anchovies. Does it make sense that I could eat zero of the eight slices? Now, some of you like it. You might want one of the eight slices or five of the eight slices, and that's fine. I just want us to understand zero of the eight slices makes sense. Now, what I do is I go for a couple of feet and hide it in the refrigerator before you guys got in here. So I could have eight of those eight slices later, maybe. But you see how zero in the numerator makes sense. And if we have zero in the numerator, that means I ate zero of that anchovy pizza. And if the slope is zero, that is the other special line. That is the one that is a horizontal line. And we'll do a little bit with those special cases at the end. First, let's do, I'm going to do a couple of examples. This example, I'm going to do two ways. First, I'm going to draw a picture and see if I can figure it out that way. So all they tell me is that I have a line, and it goes through negative 3, positive 2, and it goes through positive 4, negative 3. So then let me try to draw my line in there as best I can. And so let's see, it's going to be doing something shaky now. Let's see if I can straighten it up a little bit better. Okay, it's shaking, so I'm having a hard time doing that, but we'll go with that. And we want to look at that graph, like we've been doing at homework once, and see if we can write down the equation for it. So everybody, what's our y equals, what's how that formula go? Y equals everybody? And that's plus B. And M was the slope, right? So I need to try to figure out my slope. Is my slope positive or negative? Everybody good with it's a negative slope? So I know Y is negative something times X. So I'm going to try to figure out the number. So let's see. As I look over here, this was even with the 2... This was even with the negative. How far apart are positive 2 and negative 3? 2 above plus 3 below is how many? 5. So my vertical change is 5. So I have negative 5 over. And then let's see, for my horizontal one, I went from negative 3 to positive 4. How far apart are negative 3 and positive 4 after that? Seven. So are we comfortable with the slopes? Negative five, seven. And let's just make a guess. What does it look like the y-intercept is? I'm going to guess zero. But that's just a guess. I didn't have a formula that I did that with. I'm just guessing y is negative five, seven, x plus zero or y is negative 5 sevenths x. Slide after next, I'm going to redo the same problem, but I'm not going to guess what I'm doing. I'm going to figure it out exactly. Maybe it'll be 0, maybe not. Questions so far? All right, steps then <laughs> to find the equation of a line. First thing that we're going to do is we are going to find the slope. Maybe they tell us the slope, or maybe we have some other way of getting the slope, or maybe we have to use the formula, subtract the y's over, subtract the x's. Then, I need to find b, which I know is the y-intercept. But I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to get there. I am going to take this slope that I found in step one and put that number in there. And I am going to pick one of my points. And I am, so 2, 7, or negative 3, 11, whatever the numbers are for it. And I am going to put 
that in for the x and the y in the equation. So I put a number in for m, I put a number in for y, and I put a number in for x. The only letter or variable that's still there is b. So I need to solve that for b by using that slope-intercept form, the y equals mx plus b. It has that name because m is the slope, b is the intercept. So now I know B and I know M. So then what I have to do is to write a final equation. And to do that, I am going to use the M from part one and the B from part two. So that means I'm putting in numbers for M and B. And I go back to letters for X and Y. So I have the letter Y equals a number M times the letter X plus the number B. That's what I'm looking for to have it be the equation that you've been working with. As soon as it looks like we finished these notes, we're going to go back to that very same first problem. And we're not going to draw a graph of it. We're just going to do it with algebra so we get the exact correct value for B. And we'll see if we guessed right or wrong. So, giving that a try. Exactly the same problem. To do it algebraically. To get my slope, I have to subtract the Y's on top and the X is on the bottom. I find it helps me if I write my points one right over the other. It's not going to take that long in your problem set to write negative 3, 2, 4, negative 3. I need to subtract my Y's so I can do either bottom Y minus top Y, negative 3 minus 2, or I can do top Y minus bottom Y. But be sure these are both Y's. You do not do inside one point. You don't do 2 minus negative 3 in that first point. Y from one minus the Y of the other one. For the denominator now, I need to subtract the x's, but in the same order. Here I did the bottom y minus the top y, so now I have to do the bottom x minus the top x, 4 minus negative 3. If I set it up this way, top minus bottom for the y's, I have to do top negative 3 minus bottom 4. I say you can do it either way. It doesn't matter because look what we get when we do this. Everybody, minus 3 minus 2 is 4 minus minus 3 is it becomes 4 plus 3 or 7. If I do it this way, 2 minus minus 3 is 2 plus 3 or positive 5. I didn't hear that. We weren't very loud. Denominator is how much? Okay, both have a 5 in the top, a 7 in the bottom. Positive divided by negative. Negative divided by positive is? So either way, that is negative 5 over 7 for our slope, which is the same thing that we had before. Sometimes one way you'll have positive over positive, and then you'll have negative over negative. Well, those are both positive. Okay, so now we know our slope. The next step that I gave you was to write that slope in, so we now know it's y equals negative 5 sevenths x plus b. And those have a number for b. So here's how we're going to get the number. We're going to look at points that we know. Now on this one, we know two points. So we can either pick the negative 3, 2, or the 4, negative 3 to plug in. 
Both have a positive and a negative, right? One of them has a two and a three. The other one has a three and a four. How many would rather do the negative three, two? Raise your hand. Everybody has to vote once. Got a positive and a negative either way. So it's a choice between the two and the three or the three and the four. How many want the two and the three? And that's more than half, so we'll go with that. I'd pick that too. One's positive, one's negative, slightly smaller numbers. Maybe the arithmetic will be a little bit easier. So I need to plug negative three, two in down here. So I'm going to put the negative three in for the X and the two in for the Y which means I have 2 equals negative 5 sevenths times negative 3. I'm going to put that over 1 since I'm multiplying fractions. I don't want to make a mistake there. And then I still have B plus B. So now everything's a number except for B, and I need to solve for B. So negative 5 sevenths times negative 3 over 1. Negative times negative is positive. So right there, I'm looking at a 15 sevenths plus B. So I'm going to subtract 15 sevenths from both sides. And to do that, I'm going to remember 2 is 14 sevenths. So 14 sevenths minus 15 sevenths is negative 1 seventh. And on the right, I just have 1 seventh. Negative 1 seventh. So now I just need to write my final equation keeping y and x as letters and putting in the numbers that I know for m and b, we found that m was negative 5 seventh and b was negative 1 seventh. And that is our exact equation for the line. We were close, but we were off a little bit when we did it just by graphing and guessing. Remember we said negative 5 sevenths x of 0 and that did not actually work. That guess was not. The correct one was what we did with the algebra. Anybody with a question? Yes. How did I get the negative 5 over 7? Oh, because I'm taking m times x negative 5 over 7 times negative 3 over 1. Negative times negative is positive. 5 times 3 over 7 times 1. So I had a positive 15 sevenths plus B. To get just B, I needed to subtract the 15 sevenths from both sides. Okay. Okay. Similar but easier example. Reverse of the usual. The usual examples get harder as we go on. Last one, we had two points, <coughs> and we had to find the slope. Do we need to find the slope now? Well, we already know what the slope is, so we can start off with y equals negative two-thirds x plus b. We got that far in the last example, and we need to pick a point to plug in for x and y. Well, we don't have to pick, we only have one. So I'm going to put the x in for the x and the y in for the y. So 6 equals negative 2 thirds times negative 3, and I'll put that over 1 also, plus b. So I have negative 2 thirds times negative 3. Negative times negative is? Positive. So that's a positive something plus b. And what happens to my 3s? They're just going to cancel, so that becomes a positive 2 plus b. So if I want just B, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. B is 4. I haven't written my final equation with an X and a Y numbers for M and B. So I just fill in Y is negative 2 thirds X plus 4. And that is my answer there. What do you think? Is that one pretty easy? Okay, last thing is special cases going back to that other slide. We're going to do this one the hard way first, and then I'm going to show you the easy way to look at this and write down the equation. So we have two points like we did in example one. And so what we did before was we used our slope formula. So M needs to be, I need to subtract my Y. 
2 minus negative 1, or 3 in my numerator. And then I need to subtract my y's, or my x's, 4 minus 4. Uh-oh. What did I say when 0 is in the denominator? Is that one undefined or 0? Undefined, and everybody draw that line in the air for me. Which way does it go? If the slope is undefined, good job. That is undefined slope. It is vertical. Vertical lines are always x equals something. And in this case, what is the x always in those points? The x is always 4 in the points that I know, right? So the shortcut way is to glance at your points first. <coughs> are the x's the same? Then you can say, oh, x in all the points I know, x is always 4. So write down x is always 4, x equals 4. Then if it also asked for the y-intercept, there would be none. And the x-intercept would be 4, 0. And I'm sure you can guess the next one. I want you to do this one the shortcut way. Look at the points before you calculate the slope. Can you tell me the equation for that line just by looking at the point? Mikhail? Right. As you look at that one, y is always 1 in every single point you know, right? So that means your equation for that one is y is always 1. Is that horizontal or vertical? It's horizontal, so its slope is how much of a, a horizontal line? Zero. zero. Horizontal lines always have zero for their slope. And if I wanted my x-intercept, there isn't one. But my y-intercept, the y is always one, so zero, one. If I did my formula, I'd have 1 minus 1 in the numerator, 5 minus negative 3 in the denominator, I'd have 0 over 8. But I don't have to do that, and I can just look at it and see. Yep, yep. And I want you to get in that head, and if we just ask you the equation, then all you have to do is write down y is 1. But if we also say, like we have been on a lot of them, the slope is, the y-intercept is, the x-intercept is, you just think about what that would be for that. Anybody else?